Now, what does increased stress do? When a child is struggling to learn something, they're going to get more and more stressed. And the harder they try, the more confused they get. So this is where overwhelm comes in. So if you've got, if you're getting more and more stressed about what's going on, then the letters will start to move and the numbers will start to move. And people who were, work with people with uh, dyslexia know this because they know that the more stress they get, the faster they move. And so what we've done is we've done the opposite, is the more calm they get, the slower they move until they actually stop. And this is how people who are in primary school rotate letters. So they go from B to D, and then in the other plane they go into P and Q. And because they've got this ability, this, this amazing 3D ability to move objects around, if they get confused, they start moving letters around as well, because that's their habit. Their habit has been, when confused, move things around. And so, when confused, you start moving letters around. And when confused, you start moving numbers around, until you've got such a jumble going on that you really can't do anything. And then, of course, what happens next is we have children who become hyperactive, who can't sit still, because they've got all this stuff going on in their head. And then the next thing that happens is they become exhausted. So they come out of school at the end of the day absolutely shredded because they've had all this jumble going on all day and it's exhausted them. So what's the connection between stress and letters moving on the page? If you look at that little picture at the top of the little boy playing with his bricks, he's been used to 3D. Everything moves around. And do you remember the shape sorter that a lot of children have? So what they're doing there is that they have, they've got a triangle, for example. It won't fit in the triangle with the hole on the, on the shape sorter. So they turn it round. It finally drops through the hole and everybody cheers and says what a great kid they are. And so they've learnt this pattern that says, when confused, turn it round and it'll work. Great. The only problem is when you start doing it with words, chaos breaks out because you have to keep turning them around because they don't work around the other way. So you can start to get words like this, upside down, back to front, inside out, whatever. And it's all because they don't realize that they should be working in 2D, two dimensions. Words are two dimensions, they are flat on a piece of paper. They are not three dimension objects to be moved around. And only the most creative people can do this. If you're a bit boring and you're not very creative and you don't have this amazing ability to move pictures around, you're not going to do it. But if you're very creative, you'll start moving little b's into little d's. You'll, interestingly, if we were teaching children in capital letters, they wouldn't do it because a big d doesn't turn into a big d b. A little later on, when they get a little bit older, they start turning words around like was and saw and no and on. And then we get the whole page on the move. So the, when they look at a word, it starts to shake or it gets rivers down the middle of the page or it's, in extreme cases, the letters can even start moving off and running across the floor. Um, and then what do we see in school? So we, we have children who are confused, then they get overwhelmed with too much information. Then they start feeling as if they're a bit bewildered about, you know, it's just like as if you just jumped off of a roundabout and you're feeling a bit sick. And then they blank out in extreme cases. And would you want to read or write if this is what was happening to you? Would you even want to go to school? So we have kids doing poor behavior, school refusers and disaffected kids.